Hi everyone, this is Faye from Budgeting123 and welcome to the Online Prosperity Show. I'm here to chat with Prosper regarding all things budgeting, but it's not about being constrained, it's about having freedom, having clarity and having a peace of mind through you being aware and responsible about who you are and what you're doing about your money or not. So enjoy this interview. Welcome to yet another exciting episode of the Online Prosperity Show. And today, I've brought you Fei Chan, the Financial Readiness Coach. Fei, how are you today? I'm really well. Thanks for having me. Fantastic. I mean, obviously, if you're watching this show right now, you are probably an entrepreneur or an individual that's working to have a business that's profitable and enjoyable and if it gets profitable that means money is involved and when money is involved you need to have the good common sense to look after it so today I've brought you Faye who is a financial readiness coach mom and also an avid writer who is passionate about everyday personal financial matters now whether you're trying to buy your first home get a um, mortgage or you getting a second home or you just really need some clear uh, you know financial sense about making your next investment or whichever way you want to use your money for she's actually here to help she basically specializes in providing you with a clear and easy to follow budget for both families singles and those that are in business now Faye I could go on and on about your credentials um, but you know you're there so you might as well tell us um, a little bit about yourself so hi everyone, I'm Faye Chan and I run Budgeting123. Um, I co-founded the business with my husband a couple of years ago and I am a mum and um, I work from home. And what I really do is advise households in how to manage their money better. Because everybody has incomings, right? And everybody has bills and outgoings. But often, even though it's a very easy and simple equation, a lot of people end up in negative or they don't really know that particular number where surplus is, you know, or how much savings they've got or how much they need to live on. So when you're grounded and understand the clarity of your situation, it actually allows for a peace of mind because I know a lot of people do, you know, lose sleep over finances, they might argue about it, they worry about it, they're concerned about it, um, they stress about it, and there's a huge stress factor there for people. Um, you know, when you have the, when you're grounded in your numbers, it actually allows you to breathe and to be okay about it. So that's what I do. I help households find the black holes in their budgets and plug them up. Thanks. Absolutely. Absolutely. Thank you so much. And I mean, obviously, a lot of people, from what I've heard, they'd rather talk about sex instead of talking about money. And part of the things that you do talk about is about budgeting. And some people's common knowledge, in, uh, common knowledge about budgets, budgets is, um, do I have to spend less or do I have to go, um, you know, do without my normal luxuries? Can you just, um, you know, iron out the, the misconceptions about a, a budget and what it is and what it's not. Yeah. So when budget's a dirty word, right? Because when you say it, it triggers a lot of other things for people. And what's normally triggered is there's constraint. I'm being told what to do. There's no freedom. I have to sacrifice. Um, and, you know, I can't have fun. Like the fun's taken out of it. But what, it re what a budget, like if you don't like that word, call it a plan. Call it a you know, plan for my spending or expenditure. It's just a plan, right? A financial plan. And so it's really about understanding what you can and can't do with your money. It's just like road rules, right? So everybody drives a car and there's traffic lights and there's certain rules who turns left before right. And if you don't have those rules in place and guidelines in place, the roads will be a mess. Like you'll be sitting there going, do I turn left? Do I turn right? Do, do I go? Do I stop? Do I go faster? Do I, you know, what do I do? And so having a budget per se or a plan for your money 
It's really understanding the guidelines for it. It doesn't mean that you're constrained, that you have to spend $50, only you can't spend $50 and one cent. It really means that it's a guide. And if you follow that guide, you're, you're in a better position to work through it than not. And another thing that a budget gives you is freedom, which is an oxymoron for a lot of people, right? Because when you know, look, if you turn up to a shop and you've got $200 with you, you know you can't spend $300. So those, if that rack there is $350, you won't walk towards it. Like there's no um or ah uh or I wish, it's just like it's $350, I can't afford it. Let's look at the stuff that I can afford. And so there's freedom for you to be around things with different price tags or be around things that you want to do you know, because if you're left with a surplus, let's so say $300, you know you can't spend more than that. So it gives you freedom. Absolutely. Now, I mean, from what you're saying, a budget, um, a budgeting exercise is clearly about creating that freedom and also creating a solid foundation so that, you know, you can propel yourself further uh, with your financial goals. If you can just give me a second, I will actually then transfer a bit of money because I had been restricting myself from having a beer tonight. Um, <laughs> now, now as, a, as, a, as a money coach, like um, you are at the moment, um, you know, a financial readiness coach, um, what would people come to you for? Because some people would not understand um, the need for having somebody looking into their finances. As you said, it's a bit of a confrontational uh, exercise to go through. Yeah, so people come to me for understanding and having clarity with their household finances. So it's not about investment, it's not about creating wealth, it's really about, I got this money coming in, how come there's no savings or surplus left over, what are we doing with our money, what are we spending it on, and what proportion of that are we spending it on, and how can I go forward so that I know it's managed properly, so I don't freak out every single time a big bill comes along. So it's about understanding your household budget. So, it, you know, whether it's for yourself or when you're in a couplehood or as a family. And so often it's women that come to see me because 83% of them, right, four in five women, um, do the household finances. What it means is doing it means like the discussing of it might be a joint decision with the husband or partner, but the doing of it, like filling in forms, you know, putting the direct debit in, receiving the bills, opening the mail, the doing of the finances and the administration of it falls usually on the female, right? And so their worry and depth of concern is, is tactile, like it's there all the time. So that's when they, when they feel that it's not within their control, that the numbers or the bills have them rather than them having the bills. That's really when they contact me and go, I just need you to help me out with my household budget. What am I doing wrong? Can you just have a look at it? Just give me some clarity. Absolutely. So somebody might just be watching this right now and saying, okay, that's good and all because maybe you've got the qualifications to look at that. Um, and then they look at their situation and they say, oh, I'm single, so I don't really need to budget because I don't have kids. Or somebody might say, oh, I'm married. Uh, my wife has to look after that. Um, and maybe they say, I can't budget. Have you seen my kids? They want to eat all the time. So what sort of advice do you give to people um, you know, that have all those uh, excuses? Because they do actually sound best to the person that's saying them. Yeah, well, I use... Um, numbers or budgeting or the money as a vehicle to really awaken other people in their awareness and their responsibility to themselves and others, right? So I might use the, the money bit, right? But it's a tool for me to really assess how they are as individuals and what their life is about, what they're committed to. Because what you're committed to, you will spend your time and money on. Right, you look at someone's budget, you're like, I can tell you about their life, right? Because where their time and money goes is their life. So it's really like life coaching, but through your numbers. 
And that's why it's like a very naked approach for a lot of people, that they're freaked out going, you know, I'm like, okay, you ready to see your budget? Should I just shift the computer around? And they're like, seriously, like bracing on top of a roller coaster, right? <laughs> because to them, it's, it's, you know, it's really fearful. So, um, but when people go, yeah, but, and then Teflon, I call it the Teflon effect where they just handball, it slides off them, it goes, you know, and, and the reason excuses go past them onto someone else. Um, and I've had a couple ones do that before, you know, the, the, the females, they're going, oh, I really need this to work. And he's going, yeah, but I, I am, I am doing my part. I'm, I'm earning the income, right? And I actually turned around and said to him, I said, it's not about earning the income. You need to be interested because she's coming to you going, I need you to get this. I need you to understand the bigger picture of what's happening, not just, oh, I've done my bit, I've earned the income. And, you know, this is my pocket money so I can spend it on beer, right? So it's about being interested and being responsible for your part. Right, and it might mean that sure, I've got you might have teenage boys that are like vacuum cleaners, they just clean out your pantry in three days, right? <laughs> so, it might mean that you're gonna find solutions rather than going to the major supermarkets, you know, and paying a lot more for groceries. You might go, All right, I might get a membership at a wholesale, you know, market and go, go there or go to the you know, food markets on a Sunday at four o'clock and buy bags of stuff for a dollar each, you know, you're going to find ways around it because when there's a will, there's a way, right? As per that saying. So there is a lot of um, handballing of responsibility to other people that are managing things or people utilizing things. But I think in under that conversation is really people fearful of really taking charge and taking responsibility for themselves. Absolutely. That's, that's very insightful there. And I think whoever had um, any uh, reason not to look into their budget now, you know, you've just thrown them out of the water with uh, that response there. Now, I mean, obviously maybe somebody now thinks, okay, Faye, that's all right. Maybe you got me there. Um, what sort of process do you then take people through um, in order for them to actually uh, have a clear and easy follow sort of maybe budget or process, um, you know, in, into uh, consolidating their finances? Well, I, the first exercise I take majority of my clients through is tracking their finances. So I have them do homework for me for about two weeks and literally they write down all their daily incidental spending. Now this can be self-guided too if you don't want to be a client because you can just download my spend log, which is on my website. Right. And, um, and it's basically just a sheet of paper, really, it's a sheet of paper, but it's, um, outlined with columns and stuff like that so that you can track your daily spending, right? And the purpose of that is not for you to go and judge what your partner is spending and what you're spending. It's really just an exercise to collect raw data because then it tells me what you're spending your money on and what behaviors you've got around money. And, and then that's the very, very first step. And, you know, a, a lot of magical things happen in those couple, couple of weeks, even though it's self-directed in that time and it's reliant on you doing it and plus me being holding you accountable to do it. Um, it's, it's quite, it reveals a lot. You know, people start saying things like, oh, I didn't want to write down the muffin, so I just bought the coffee instead of coffee and muffin, right? So they start to self-regulate, um, right, and self-censor their own spending. So it works wonders in that way. So that's the first bit. And then we get together and actually sit down and go through your budget. So be it that I do a comprehensive one for you, you bring all your bills with you, and I just say, tell me this, tell me this, tell me this, tell me that, is that quarterly or is it monthly? Have your bills smoothed it? Or, you know, how much do you owe on that? Do you have any fines? I just basically comb through all your expenses, ask you several questions, and you just give me the data, and I create the budget with you. Now, in that time in the appointment, 
I see a lot of nuances, especially if it's a couple. I read body language, I understand what's going on, or, you know, the guy might be pulling faces at me as the female's talking or vice versa, and that happens a lot. And I, I try and keep a straight face. Um, um, and then the thing is the diagnostic tool that the budget is as well as going through the spend log with them, right? Um, I get gut reactions like from them. Like I've had people say, I can't believe we spent that much just on food. I feel sick. I literally feel like throwing up. So there's actually physical reactions, which is a good thing because I know the impact is being made. Wow. And so that through that whole process of going through your budget with you, eventually the couple becomes on, they come on the same page, right? So they might start off with, this is what we think the problem is, but she does this and he does that and she does this and he does that. And at the end of the day, because I'm not dealing with the emotion, I'm not dealing with them fighting or the, you know, I'm not in their household. I just deal with looking at the facts. And when you look at the facts, emotions can't hang around. All right. I don't look at that and go, oh, I don't know what the, you know, or, or be angered by a number. I, can't, I don't. I'm not, I, I'm not in your life. You are. Yeah. So at the end of the day, I look at the numbers and have them decide for themselves what they want to do and don't do about their budget. Do we take this out? Do we not take that out? It's their choice and their decision because it's their life, right? Absolutely. But I'm there to facilitate the process so that they really know what they're doing. And at the end of that whole exercise, it could be two or three hours long, they're on the same page, wow. right? And it might be the first time they're on the same page about money or about how they do life via money in a long time. Wow. Yeah. So. I, I can imagine the beautiful, um, you know, moments that when people actually start having a clear vision and a clarity of where their money is actually going, because most of the, uh, you know, there's a big divorce uh, rate I, I, anywhere else in the world. And most of it is, you know, emanates from, you know, the lack of communication on money and also right. the lack um, of transparency when it comes to how people spend money. So I'm thinking exactly. basically, yeah. yes, this, I think you should actually upgrade your skills and become a celebrant because I think after that people <laughs> might, want, might want to renew their vows and, and, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <laughs> <laughs> we should call you the money celebrant right there. Now, obviously, uh, now that you know you've actually put uh, this and made it so clear for us, um, I, I grew up knowing that clarity um, is the beat and end all. And have you ever noticed that when you're driving in your car, the windscreen is um, bigger than the rearview mirror because you've got to see and have a clear vision of where you're going than looking at where you've been. So maybe you haven't um, solidified your finances and, and you never had um, a solid foundation which can propel you forward. I think it's time uh, to get in touch with um, Faye so she can help you with her budgeting one, two, three exercise. Now, Faye, how can people get a hold of you? Well, you can email me at faye at budgeting123.com. Absolutely. And it's faye without the E. Um, or you can, I've got Facebook and Instagram and both the handles are budgeting123. So you'll be able to get me there as well. And I get a lot of my leads come through Facebook. So, you know, if it pings, I'll answer. <laughs> Absolutely. I cannot thank you enough for the time that you've spent with us right now. But Faye, we might have people that are still caught up in their old ways of thinking and thinking, you know, money, money is the root of all evil. People that have money are worse people and all those limiting beliefs around money. What sort of go-to advice do you give to people when it really comes to crunching their numbers and really looking at the dashboard that then constitutes what their future is going to be like if they look uh, good uh, if their finances are looking good well look if, even if i've worked with people that um doesn't matter what their mindset is have either had good or bad budgets, right? It really doesn't matter what the mindset is. But if you're wanting to make a difference 
to how you action your money and how you transform it or how you manage it without willing to unblock your barriers, then it's a losing battle. It's almost like the wife coming to me saying, I want to work with you, but my husband's not on board. I can work with her only to a certain level and then the rest is useless, right? Because I'm not working with the whole, I'm working with a bit of it, right? And so same with your mindset. If you're not willing to deal with yourself and break through it, right, then I can't make a difference to you. Sure, I can provide you with clarity. Sure, I can give you a really good budget and go through that whole process for you. But for you to really, you know, break through that for yourself, you need to be willing, right? And sometimes in that whole process, because you're dealing with the semantics of it, um, if you're willing to let the emotions come up, and I'm not saying that you're going to cry or anything, but it's really about dealing with um, being responsive to what you see and what you don't see. Absolutely. Thank, thank you so much. And if you're watching this video right now, you can actually, um, you've had proof positive that face advisory and coaching angle is very intuitive. You know, how you are about your finances really lies in your willingness to be aware and be a responsible human being or business person and nothing else really. And the actions that you're going to be following, you know, they're going to um, help you have a direction towards um, a happier existence. And uh, people like Faye are always uh, willing to help out. Faye, thank you so much for your time today. Thank you so much for having me. And it's been really enjoyable talking to you, Prosper. Absolutely.